Welcome to the first webinar organized by the BET project. The project, founded by the European Union Horizon 2020 program, is coordinated by the Italian Consumer Association Altro Consumo. Includes 11 organizations from seven European countries and it has the objective of informing and supporting all stakeholders, from manufacturers to consumers, in implementation of the new energy label. BERT has both an informative scope towards citizens and formative scope toward market actors. This webinar is part of the training tools developed to help suppliers to understand the new energy level requirements. The enter into force of the new energy level is related to several operative and communication challenges. This webinar will be the opportunity of highlighting the main issues linked to the new energy label and of providing some guidance to minimize errors. Here an overview of the arguments that will be discussed together. First of all, I will address the reasons for the need of a new energy label and I will present you the families of products involved in that change. It will be then the moment to compare the new label with the old one. Which are the differences among them? How to use the new tool? How to read the information reported on it? As said, the change of the label will have an impact on several stakeholders. Suppliers will be the first in the value chain forced to adapt the current procedures to the new energy label requirements. Therefore, It is important to understand which are suppliers' obligations, their responsibilities and the important deadlines to be met. As we will explore later in details, the new requirements are about the label as well as the new functionalities of the APRE database that you should be already familiar with. Finally, I will provide you some information regarding other important aspects that must be taken into account by suppliers. The eco-design regulation is probably the most important of all of these. I would like to stress the fact that this video has the ambition of presenting in a complete and simple way the content of the new energy labor regulation. However, we strongly recommend to always refer to the legislation documents to acquire the legally binding information. Let's start exploring the reason behind the introduction of the new energy label. Starting from 1995, European Union adopted the energy label as the instrument to support consumers, as well as professional buyers, in informal purchase process of electric and electronic equipment, guiding them in the selection of the most energy efficient products. The energy label is considered a successful tool that increase the supply and demand of the most performing products. However, the scale from A++++ to G, currently used in the label, has become difficult to understand, losing its effectiveness. The higher classes, with many plus, are too densely populated and almost no products belong to lower classes. This causes confusion in customers. It is more difficult for them to identify the most efficient product and, as consequence, manufacturers are less pushed to improve their technologies. This is the reason why the European Union has revised and optimized the energy label. The revision occurred through an energy label framework regulation and different delegate acts, one for each family of products involved in the energy label change. But which are these products families we are talking about? The introduction of the new energy label will gradually involve all groups of household and commercial appliances. The first wave of rescaling will be implemented in 2021, both in stores and for online sales, for the following six product groups. Household refrigerators and freezers, washing machine and washer dryers, dishwashers, displays including TVs and monitors, light sources, commercial refrigerators and freezers. 
for this last product group, a completely new label will be implemented, which will only be relevant for the professional retailer sector. This label will not be visible for domestic consumers and will not be discussed further during this webinar. So, it's time to look closely to the new energy label layout and content. As you can see from the pictures, since its introduction, the energy label already changed a few times to be in line with the product development and consumers' needs. Which are the latest news brought by the new energy label? First of all, we should discuss about maybe the biggest change. A new energy scale is introduced. Actually, this is a rescaling of previous one. No more plus classes will appear in the energy label. The scale will be from A to G. In the rescaled system, the A class will represent the most efficient products, arriving gradually to the G class, which will include the least efficiency appliances. It is important to bear in mind that there is no direct correspondence between old classes and new ones, since testing procedures used to determine energy consumption and consequently the energy class of a product are different, as well as formulas, parameters and value intervals that enable product classification as different from the previous one. As a consequence, this means that an appliance which now displays as A++++ classification can be reclassified as a C and another appliance can be reclassified into a D, even within the same product category. Therefore, in relation to this aspect, I take the opportunity to highlight that measurements and tests performed to determine the information contained in the label are also new. Measurements and calculation methods have been updated in order to assure better adaptation to real household appliances use conditions. Detailed information on the specific testing and measurement methods that have to be applied for each product family are reported in the annex of the correspondent delegate acts. Secondly, there is another important news to be taken into account. The introduction in the label of a QR code. Which is the purpose of this QR code? The code will provide a direct link to a large number of official non-commercial information, which have been introduced by manufacturers into the EPRE database. The QR code is an innovation not just for consumers that will have access to additional information on the products in a transparent way and just using their smartphone but also for suppliers that have the obligation of generating the code pre-registering the product in the April database. We will explore this aspect more in detail in the further presentation. There are then more graphical changes to be considered looking at the new energy label. Namely, the energy consumption indication is more visible than before, located in the middle section of the label. The energy consumption refers to number of cycles, as in the case of dishwasher, washing machines and washer dryers, or two hours of use, as in the case of displays and lamps. And finally, also pictograms will be slightly different than before, and some of them will be completely new. The meaning of each of them is quite intuitive to understand. Got to these points, considering that this webinar is dedicated to a specific target audience, namely suppliers, I would like to get to the heart of suppliers' obligation related to the new energy label. However, before that, it is important to understand who is considered a supplier according to the energy label framework regulation. A supplier is a manufacturer established in the European Union or the authorized representative of a manufacturer who is not established in the European Union or an importer who places a product on the European Union market. Is your company falling in one of these three categories? Yes, so you are a supplier 
according to the framework regulation and the following information can sound interesting for you. Another pivotal concept that needs to be clarified before analyzing the supplier's obligation is the concept of place on the market. The expression place on the market, as reported in the blue guide, refers to when a manufacturer or an importer supplies a product to a distributor or an end user for the first time in the European Union market. This definition is valid for each individual product, not a type of product. In other words, a product is placed on the market when it is made available for the first time on the European Union market. This kind of operation is reserved to manufacturers or importers that are the only ones that can place on the market a product. When a manufacturer or an importer supplies a product to a distributor or to an end user for the first time, this transaction is called place on the market. Any further transaction, for example, for distributor to distributor or from distributor to end user, this transaction is defined as making available. Besides placing on the market a product, which are the other suppliers' main responsibilities, similar to previous legislation, suppliers are in charge of the energy label generation of providing together with the product its energy label and consequently verify the accuracy and reliability of the information reported on the label. Since the 1st of January 2019, suppliers are also obliged to register their equipment on the April data release before putting them on the European market. As said, the April database is active since the beginning of 2019. So, what's new? First of all, through April, it will be possible to generate the energy label. April is an online database created to make the compliance control activity more effective. The supplier should make available through the database the product registration, the detailed technical information, so the product information sheet, the energy label information, the notification when units of a model are no longer placed on the market. April will be organized in two different parts. The public part of the database provides the label data and the product information sheet for viewing for retailers and for consumers through the QR code. There is then the section for market surveillance. This section is the only accessible for market surveillance authorities. The data included here is mainly intended to support and facilitate market surveillance activities. A product for which changes are made and these changes are relevant for the label or for the product information sheets has to be considered to be a new model. Therefore, suppliers will have to re-register the product in April. After the re-registration, a new April identifier will be generated. Here we are at the most operative part of this webinar. Now we will try to understand what should be done by suppliers and the deadlines that need to be met. I would like to start saying that there are relevant aspects to be considered. First of all, dates are important. There are pivotal dates to keep in mind as 1st November 2020 and 1st March 2021 for washing machines, washer dryers, dishwashers, fridges and displays and 1st September 2021 for labs. These dates indicate the beginning of the obligation for suppliers to start providing products with the new energy label. However, this obligation does not apply to all products but it depends on when the products have been placed on the market. We will see this in a few minutes. Secondly, there are transition periods. As said, dates are very important, but there are derogation and special requirements that apply only during so-called transition periods. Third, as I recalled before, to understand the supplier's obligation is fundamental to keep in mind when the products have been placed on the market. 
according to the definition explained before. This aspect is particularly important also to proper manage products that are manufactured outside Europe and need some time to enter in the European market. Fourth, the energy label can be visible to consumers displayed in physical or online shops only from 1st March 2021. Only the current energy label can be displayed to consumers before that date. Analyzing timing and obligation as reported in the framework regulation, five different cases can be identified for product as washing machine, washer dryers, dishwasher, fridges and displays, while two cases can be identified for lighting sources. Let's start from washing machines, washer dryers, dishwashers, fridges and displays. Case 1. Products placed on the market already before 1st November 2020 and that are no longer placed on the market after 1st November 2020 when rescheduled label involves new testing methods. In this case, products may still be sold with the old label until the end of November 2021 and no new information needs to be provided by suppliers. Start from the 1st December 2021, products with the old label must not be sold anymore. Also, when a supplier ends his activities, therefore the retailer is not able to obtain the rescheduled label, products with the old label may still be sold until the end of November 2021. Second case, products placed on the market before 1st November 2020. So, all products that are still placed on the market after that date. In this case, a transition period applies. During a four month transition period between 1st November 2020 and 28 February 2021, it is still true that only the current energy label can be shown to consumers. But it is specified that suppliers, on your request of the dealers, should provide the new energy label for products in the retailer's stock. Suppliers should re-register in April database the product with a rescheduled label. As a consequence, a new product information sheet will be generated. Suppliers should make available the new information sheet through April, not in a printed version. However, retailers can request a printed version of the product information sheet to suppliers. Suppliers should deliver printed labels and product information sheet to the dealer free of charge, promptly and in any event within five working days after the dealer's request. This means that there will be a period of four months during which retailers have the possibility to request the new label for products placed on the market before 1st November 2020. Within 14 working days after 1st March 2021, then, old labels shown to consumers have to be physically replaced with new ones by retailers. Third case, new products, namely product placed on the market after 1st November 2020, for which then new testing procedures are applicable. Also in this case, a transition period applies. During a four month transition period between 1st November 2020 and 28 February 2021, it is still true that only the current energy label can be shown to consumers. But it is specified that suppliers must provide the old and the new energy label with the new unit of products. So, old and new energy label should be both provided but the new energy label will not be shown to consumers until 1st March 2021. Suppliers have to register the product only on the basis of the reviewed regulation in April. Suppliers must make available the new information sheet through April, instead of providing a printed version. However, the supplier should deliver a product information sheet to the dealer free of charge, promptly and, in any event, within five working days upon the dealer's request. 
This means that there is the possibility during four months that consumers will receive product that contains, for example, in the product packaging, both labels, the current and the new one. Why, in shops, the new one will be not visible yet. As in the previous case, within 14 working days, from 1st March 2021, the new label will be visible also in the shops. Old labels have to be replaced with the new one by retailers. For new products, so product placed on the market after 1st November 2020, suppliers have another possibility. This brings us to the fourth case. For these products, new testing procedures are applicable. The supplier may choose not to supply the existing label with the units of models placed on the market after 1st November 2020. However, in this case, the supplier should notify the dealer to not offer those units for sale before 1st March 2021. It will be possible to sell the products containing only the new label only after 1st March 2021. It is time for the fifth and last case for washing machines, washer dryers, dishwashers, fridges and displays. For new products placed on the market after 1st March 2021, only the new energy label must be provided. Let's proceed analyzing the cases of lighting sources. Case 1. It regards all products that now means products placed on the market before 1st September 2021 that they are no longer placed on the market after that date. In this case, starting from 1st September 2021, suppliers, during a transition period of 18 months and on request of the dealers, will provide labels in form of stickers to place over the old label. These labels must have the same size as the old one to completely color it. From 1st March 2023, only the new label can be shown to consumers. Old label shown in the packaging or attached to a product must be covered by the sticker with the rescaled label. Here the last case, the second one regarding lighting sources. It covers the new lighting sources, so lighting sources placed on the market after 1st September 2021. For this case, from 1st September 2021, the supplier should provide each light source in an individual packaging with the rescaled label printed on it. Again, from the 1st September 2021, dealers must show the new product with the new label on the packaging in the store and online shops. As final remarks on lighting sources, I take the opportunity to highlight that from 1st May 2021, suppliers must re-register products in every database, according to the new regulation. There are specific rules that apply to online and distance selling. An arrow with the efficiency class of the product and the range of energy efficiency classes has to be placed next to the product model for any product information provided on the web. The detailed requirement concerning implementation of the new energy label for distance and intercepting are extensive and can be found in the annex of the Delegate Acts. There are specific rules also for displays. Suppliers should either print the colored label on the packaging or put a sticker with the label on the packaging. Also in this case, all the detailed information can be found in the framework regulation. Similarly, there are specific rules that apply for integrated lights and there are specific rules for communication. Where can you start communication activities about the new energy label? Any graphic advertising relating to a specific product affected by the energy label rescaling process and therefore containing the new label and the indication of the new energy classes cannot be made public before the date of application of the new regulation. So, 1st March 2021 or 1st September 2021 for logs. This does not mean, however, that information campaign such as the one the label project is performing cannot be carried out before the dates of implementation of the new regulation. On the contrary, information activities are essential to be already when the new energy label will be implemented. In any case, 
you have to be careful assessing if the content you are publishing will be considered advertising, for example, content referring to a specific product or model or a particular brand, or if it will be considered informative, as those that include the energy level topic regardless brand or model. This applies also to catalogs that can be prepared before the application date, but not be made public before 1st March 2021 or 1st September 2021 for lumps. I invite you again to have a look to the framework regulation and to the specific delegate acts to have a clear picture of all the new energy labor requirements. Now that we have seen together several aspects of the new energy label, I would like to mention that in parallel with the rescaled energy label, also a new eco-design regulation is entering into force. The regulation introduced new rules about energy efficiency, functionalities, resource efficiency, for example availability of spare parts and obligation of a first sale service to be provided to the consumers, as well as information availability requirements. We are now at the end of the webinar. I hope you found it useful. Exploring the best website dedicated to suppliers, you will find other resources and materials, as the legislation, the guidelines for suppliers containing more operative details, and any news regarding project activities and initiatives. And very important, you can find a frequently asked question document. This document aims to be a collection of questions and answers on the issues related to the implementation of the new energy label. This document is a living document. This means that explanations and answers will be added whenever suppliers need them and whenever they will ask us to address new issues and investigate new aspects. Considering their different needs and in line with the different implementation stage of the new energy label. Therefore, we suggest that if you have not found the answers to your doubts today, you can contact us. We will clarify and update the frequently asked question document, gathering the opinion of experts and constantly discussing with the European Commission. Thank you for following and not hesitate to contact us if you need additional information.